Hi, 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 hi. This video contains really, 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 really heavy subjects, especially since I don't try sugarcoating any of it. If issues like recreational drug use, suicidal ideation, and self-harm make you uncomfortable, go somewhere else. Also, photosensitive warning too. <laughs> Content creation. The internet connects everyone now more than ever, and content creation is the spotlight of this current generation. With apps like TikTok, Twitch, and YouTube dominating their respective platform types, it's become a dream of many kids growing up today to become someone ultra famous. Most people give a stab at content creation, and get zero views on their first couple of videos, and decide it isn't worth it. And they usually stop there, pursuing a better pastime like music, or art, or reselling Yeezys to the rich kids in the neighborhood for four times the market value. That's the good ending. The darker timeline is that they become semi-successful and continue the hobby, hoping it grows into something bigger in the future. I am unfortunately one of these people, and while I'm not the size of my commentary idols like The Right Opinion or Pyrocynical if he would actually upload something on his main channel, I think I have enough experience to know the general ins and outs of being a creator. So on a lovely Friday evening, while I was ignoring my university coursework and the impending exams the following week, I was browsing my Steam store until I found a weird game that stuck out to me. I wrote it off as one of those generic anime Kumar bait male fantasy game or the girl or girls unconditionally love you for no reason. You know, something that appeals to the touch-deprived adolescent men and young adults such as myself. The game was on sale, and I had a few bucks to spare, so I bought it with the intention of streaming it to my friends so we could all take a laugh at how bad the game was, and oh boy, did I not realize that this game would make me question my entire content creation career. Needy Streamer Overload, originally called Needy Girl Overdose, is one of the best games I have ever played. The title of this game is actually a pun. In Japanese, the character for the number 2 is pronounced ni. Turn the D part of the needy word into the letter D, and now you have 2D Streamer Overload, which is a reference to how anime is only two-dimensional, and why can't she be real, why can't she be real, why can't she be real? The game features a hopeful but hopeless ambitious young girl named Ame who has dreams of becoming a popular content creator, just like me. For real, for real. K-Angel is her streamer internet personality where she dons her pink and pastel palette cosplay. You play as P-Chan, short for Producer-Chan, because that's what you are. You're her producer, except the responsibilities of a producer in this game are a bit, uh, generous, to put it lightly. You see, you're not just managing her streams. If the game was deciding what animated Poggery emote to add to her chat, or banning the simp who just donated 500 bucks and asked for her toenails, I wouldn't be here with an existential crisis. You're managing Ama's entire life. So you log into her account using the strongest password known to man, her username with the two at the end, yep, definitely not getting hacked by the Dogecoin Elon Musk crypto bro hive mind. She does a basic stream introducing herself, immediately gets a thousand followers, because she's a girl on the internet, and now's when the fun begins. From noon to night, you get to decide what she does. Here's how the game works. 
Amin's dream is to get 1 million followers in 30 days, and you're here to make that dream come true. At the task manager window, she has four counters. The follower count, which is self-explanatory, stress, affection, and mental darkness. Followers are mainly gained through streaming, stress is described as how much pressure she's feeling, affection is how much she loves you, and mental darkness is how well she can cope with reality. The game advises you to strike a good balance between all of these, and surely you, an empathetic social creature, would take her mental health seriously and not push her to her limits just because she's a fictional anime character and you're unsympathetic to her clingy and toxic nature and think she deserves to be knocked down a peg. Ame has three time slots, noon because of course Gen Z can't get out of bed in the morning, dusk, and night. During these time slots, you can choose to do different activities that'll raise or lower some of these bars. For example, you can tell her to straight up sleep until dusk, which lowers her mental darkness and stress. This action only takes one time slot, which is your noon one. You can also hang out with her and... Okay, I'm gonna have to be honest here. I don't know why they censored the word hug. So if you guys hug, it'll be so soothing, so comfy, lowering her stress and mental darkness and raising her affection by a lot but this action actually takes up two of her time slots, the noon and dusk ones. The reason why the time slots are so important is because Ame can only stream at night, which remember is the main way to increase your follower count. So during noon and dusk, you'll want to make sure she's stream ready, and in order to do that, she'll also need stream ideas. So you can get stream ideas by doing activities that have a little exclamation point next to them. Some stream ideas require specific previous streams to happen. When you press that start stream button, you'll usually have multiple stream ideas pop up, unless you're out of ideas, and GG Ripbozo, no streaming for you that day. During her streams, you moderate her chat by highlighting chat message donations for her to read out at the end of each stream, and deleting messages that would be harmful for her stream. Deleting the right messages lowers Ame's stress, which is honestly a nice touch. As her follower size grows, the chat starts taking on more and more into the XQC hive mind, becoming as unmanageable as grooming allegations against a dating Discord server owner. Moderating her streams is optional though, and you can just skip this entire segment. Don't worry, it doesn't impact the game that much, she'll have plenty of other things to worry about later. Each stream has different bonuses and multipliers that'll impact how many followers you gain from that stream. These multipliers can be increased by doing the activities relevant to them. It's pretty standard stuff. Watching movies increases her cinephile bonus, playing video games together increases the gamer girl bonus, overdosing on sleeping pills increases Ama's impact bonus and gives her access to stronger medications. Oh wait, that's right. I didn't delve into the absolutely deranged activities you can do in this game. There's the not so bad ones like touching grass with Ama, but then you have stuff like letting her go on dates with other people people, moking wed, as 2018 Partisanical once said, or even worse, committing a grave mortal sin, searching her name up on 4chan, the group of notorious hackers. You can also do a pre-stream alert on her socials, giving a small boost in followers and a pre-stream bonus for her streams that gets used up once Ame streams in trade for increasing her stress and mental darkness. After doing literally anything, Ame will make a Twitter post of her thoughts on the activity. Activities can also change depending on Ame's stress and mental darkness. For example, that hugging session you guys can have. While well, doing it enough times and taking enough stronger medications, that can turn into chem hugging. Yeah. All of these can indirectly help you get more followers by increasing the bonuses on the gets with the corresponding streams. And of course, just like real life, the more extreme streams always garner more attention than tame ones. Every time she streams, her stress goes up by a lot, especially if it's a risque one, and depending on the stream topic, it can also affect other stats. Milestone streams, however, don't increase her stress at all, so if you're smart with your planning, you can use these to buffer in between days where Ame has high stress in order to maintain the consecutive streaming bonus. Ame's stress, affection, and mental darkness don't necessarily affect her streams, but you might want to be a little careful managing these bars. That's enough talking about managing Ame though, let's talk about the main star of the show, Ame herself. She is extremely attached to you, and by extremely, I mean she texts you at every time of day, and you are obliged to reply back with a sticker. And if you forgore one too many times because the new Yumemi video dropped and you need to see Fumo's bouncing, may God have mercy on your soul. If you're terrified of receiving female attention like me, you can bypass having to text her constantly by raising her stress meter enough to where she doesn't message you. 
Ama's texts truly reflect her personality. She's a mixed bag of cheery, toxic, and cynical with just a hint of delusional, and even though three out of those four adjectives I described her with imply that she's probably the last anime girl you'd want a body pillow of. Oops. Her character deeply struck a chord with some of my experiences when I'm not at my highest, though to be fair, I'm not exactly the sanest person on this planet either. One moment she could be making fun of university students saying their lives are over despite everything working out a few years later, ouch, that hurt a little, and the next moment that unhinged high energy persona of hers drops and she contemplates why a person as useless as her is even alive. Ama texting you is important because it shows her true thoughts. It doesn't take a massive brain to realize content creators don't share every aspect of themselves. They only exaggerate or emphasize personality traits they want the viewer to see, and in this case Ahmed chose to showcase her cheeriness to the world, hiding her anxiety, toxicity, and overall clingy behavior behind that cute cosplay. As her producer and the one receiving all these deranged texts, you get to see a side of her that many of her fans wouldn't, which is honestly up to you to decide whether that's a good or bad thing. Despite your opinion though, the exclusivity of a secret side to Ahmed actually makes you feel more connected to her compared to outsiders. Also, because sharing secrets with another person establishes and builds trust, you can tell how much Ahmed depends on you to not just manage her life, but to be there emotionally. She even admits the day after her first stream that she's so reliant on you, if she doesn't become the biggest streamer, she'd break and fall apart. And you, with your W Riz, say that you could just break her yourself. This paragraph dump in general was unsettling to read for me because of how much Ahmed puts you on a pedestal. Not only just following everything you order. She said it herself that if she didn't become successful enough, it would cause a lot of despair for her, even if the responsibility was ultimately on you as a mentor to guide her towards her goals. It's clear right off the bat that Ahmed derives assurance and stability from you and not within herself, which is a very big red flag of an unhealthy relationship between you and her. The K Angel streamer persona is heavily inspired off of Japanese VTuber and idol culture being very cheery, cute, and bubbly to attract a lot of male fans. Eye explosion. Eye explosion. <laughs> Fans of any influencer or celebrity develop parasocial relationships with their idol. Essentially, the fan feels close to the creator because the creator shares details of their life or their personality with the audience, but they don't actually know the individual fans to a personable extent. We don't know each other, and even if we did, I am not important of enough of an entity in your life to strive for my blessing, okay? I'm just an idiot that plays chess on the internet and complains a lot. It's especially worse with idols whose personalities are designed to have touch-deprived guys fall in love with how bright they appear on screen. You know, senpai, three presidents have died on the 4th of July. It's why Alma has to keep it a secret that she's dating Pichon. Fans who are in love with K Angel would feel cheated that Alma has a significant other already. Alma, however, doesn't reciprocate these feelings, shit-talking her fans on her private Twitter. While this sounds super harsh, it's not uncommon in these types of spaces because of how suffocating followers can be to an influencer or media star. Ama's name actually has two meanings in Japanese, rain and candy or sweet. K-Angel's persona obviously symbolizes the sweet side of the name, while Ama herself can be the rainy and gloomier side. K-Angel wears bright pastel colors, which contrasts Ama's usual outfit of gothic, darker tones, just as how K-Angel's much brighter personality-wise compared to Ama's true thoughts. Ama's clothing doesn't fit in with the general color palette of all the backgrounds, as if she's the odd one out. When I started this game, my first impression of her was a classic happy-go-lucky, something-something tragic, who cares backstory anime girl that loved the player unconditionally because that's what they do nowadays, and that I was her one true savior because that's also what they do nowadays. Then after forcing her to stream, I got her stress bar a little too high. There is no music for this scene, only distorted crushing noises over a bloody red background. Ame is shaken with her hands on her face and a distraught expression. Even without looking at her text, it's obvious what she wants you to do. Looking at the specific application, it's named self-destruct 
with a bar that passes innocently back and forth from the top of the window to the bottom. Pressure built up in my chest every time I clicked that cut button. It's truly an unnerving scene, especially when you come into this game being tricked by its bright colors and naive goal chasing. After committing the act, Ame's stress and affection go down while her mental darkness goes up and she gets the stream idea and important message. You're prompted to go tonight, skipping whatever plans you had for her on the noon and dusk time slots, and Ame, without an input from you, begins her transformation sequence into K-Angel, except with the colors inverted. The An Important Message stream is her talking about people self-harming and that, in general, the world should be more empathetic. The chat, however, is mixed on the spontaneous stream. Some people can tell something's wrong with Ame. Some people absorb her message, and some people don't care and want her to stream normal things. The stream ends, and the next day begins. Now, after this episode, I wasn't heartless enough to get her stress even remotely that high ever again, but maybe you're more of the less feely or morbidly curious type. What'll happen if you get her stress to a hundred? Okay, there goes my screen, I guess. She doesn't start self-harming again, so that's better? Instead, her mental state is completely deteriorated, and Ame no longer has the capacity to hold all her anxiety in. At least in the An Important Message stream, she was able to maintain some sort of semblance of her online personality, and this stream titled, uh, it's one of the very few moments where she drops the key angel character entirely and admits her pitiful existence, contemplating suicide live in front of her audience. She groans, apologizes profusely for the weird stream, pleads for someone to end her miserable existence, and ends the stream. After the stream, Ame posts on her private Twitter that she's scared of something and wishes to be erased from this world. Her stress is reduced by 20 and... Huh. The stress cap is increased by 20. Well, I know some of you sociopaths wonder what'll happen if you reach the max of this one. Well, it happens to be an ending. Ame posts on her social medias that she's gonna quit streaming, proceeds to delete her accounts, and you get a message that says, being strict for her sake is not the same as being kind to her. That's it. It's very abrupt and dry. Technically, you could be hopeful and say that since we don't know what happened to her, maybe she just quit the internet for good. But considering having 80 stress made her self-harm, and having 100 gave her an entire mental breakdown, I wouldn't count on that. If you were wondering all this time what the stress, affection, and mental darkness bars are for, well, here's your answer. You get special events depending on how high or low each one is. Ame's mental instability isn't the only thing that'll throw off your plans. You see, when I said that you get to manage her entire life, you thought that meant 100% absolute control, like she would kneel down and swear an oath to never disobey you. Nah. Ame sometimes has spontaneous moments throughout the run where she throws your plans off a cliff and does what she wants for that day. Come on, cut that girl some slack. It's her life. Of course she's gonna have some days where she does what she wants. Occasionally, Ame can take control of the day herself, doing a random activity, though it's usually one of the harmless ones. If she's super stressed, you can get the event where she just decides to sleep until tomorrow, which might make you smash your PC for ruining the consecutive streaming streak, cursing every female in the world for being spontaneous and quirky like that. But it's honestly nice that even though her mentor isn't taking care of her, she can try to mitigate some of her own stress. On day 15, halfway through your month-long journey, after doing whatever you wanted her to do on the nighttime slot, Ame asks a series of questions, contemplating the purpose of her streaming and just being alive in general. This specific event allows you to choose three different replies, and depending on how you respond, Ame's stress can increase, decrease, or stay the same. What I think makes her character interesting is how Ame reacts to your answers. So, question one. Hey, do you think it's okay for me to keep living like this? Asking what's wrong is the reply that lowers her stress, and saying, I think you should die, is actually the neutral one here. With the third one, you're fine, she can clearly tell you're not giving her your full attention. I was just wondering if anyone would even miss me if I were gone. They don't have to watch me. They can just go watch some other streamer, right? The response that actually lowers her stress is agreeing with her, but if you try saying, no way, she thinks you're being fake. The last response, I think you should just die, doesn't actually raise her stress, and instead she just agrees with you. Hey, do you really like me for me and not because I'm pretty? 
Well, duh, lowers her stress. Nah, I'd be fine with anyone, increases her stress and has Ame flaunt her good looks, saying she wishes you luck on finding someone prettier than her. And the third, neutral option, which I personally think should have been the one that gets a negative reaction from Ame, is saying, maybe? No, like, seriously? Now you're being the indecisive young adult female? I bet you also eat hot chip and lie. Her response to this is saying she's gonna try her hardest to turn that maybe into a yes, which is honestly the sweetest way to put it. She then asks, what do people even like about me? And your choices are her face, which lowers her stress and has her reaffirm her cuteness, her everything, which increases her stress and has Ame call herself a factory defect, and the lower half of her body, in which you get called a simp. L and deserved honestly. After your response, Ame says, I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to live. And the reply that she likes is the one where you say, of course she's allowed to live. Her reaction to that information is that even if it is a half-baked response, it made her laugh a little and she realized she shouldn't be taking life so seriously. Saying, yeah, no, makes her apologize for being alive, raising her stress, and the please live option gives you a reply where she says living is painful. The sixth and seventh questions from Ame are just, do you love me? So, you guys can predict the responses and which ones are positive and negative for Ame. If you really don't know how to answer that question, I will personally summon a demon from the ninth dimension to cast a curse on you that makes you bitchless for life. The final question from Ame asks, uh, What should I do? And the one that lowers her stress is where you encourage her to continue streaming, in which she replies she needs to create a space for all her fans to belong in. Do your best in life increases her stress, and she gets mad at you for being vague. You can become the funny man with the lightning background with the last option, and Ama says she won't after making it this far. There's also another event you can trigger at night after finishing the day off. If you have above 60 affection and mental darkness, Ame will talk to you about her childhood. There's four different variations of this message, all with a different piece of information. For the first piece, Ame says that you texting her late reminded her of her parents neglecting her as a child. When she tried talking to them, they were just give her such a dry response and then go back to whatever they were doing. Ame admits that she's scared of sleeping alone and she apologizes for paragraph dumping on you. In the second variation, Ame recalls that time you both went to the store together and a kid was crying because his friends were ignoring him, reminding her of her childhood. She was bullied in elementary school by one of the popular girls for having a pretty face. For the third text, Ame says she loves you a lot and wants you to promise her that you both will get married together. She recalls that her parents used to a lot, to the point where her mom threw a knife at her dad. Even though they ended up divorcing, her parents still continued to fight over who would get custody over Ame. Every day as a child, she would be scared of coming home to the point where she promised herself to marry someone that would make her happy, unlike her parents. The fourth and final variation of this message starts off with Ame talking about moving to a nicer place when she starts earning more. She's then reminded of growing up poor. Very, very poor. So poor in fact that her mother tried forcing her to become a prostitute. Ame ran away from home, hopping from friend's house to friend's house, whoever let her in. She pleads for you to not abandon her, saying she doesn't want to experience being broken alone again. Ame's behavior finally starts making sense. She texts you every day and night and begs you not to leave her because she's been alone throughout her entire childhood and doesn't want to experience that again. As a child, you really only have two places that you spend most of your life at, school and home. If you were bullied at school, you could come home crying and your family would console you. If you had an abusive family, school was an opportunity to be away from them, providing a safe space. Unfortunately, Ame had neither of these. At school, she was bullied. At home, her parents were fighting. Ame blames herself for everything, even the things you force her to do, and looking at it from a cynical perspective, you might say that she's giving herself a victim complex to make you pity her so that you don't leave her. This could be partially true, I obviously don't know her true inner thoughts, but I think the bigger reason she blames herself is because if she blamed you, you could just leave her and she would risk being alone again. Constant conflict was omnipresent throughout her childhood, being bullied and having parents fight over custody, so Ame's mind causates her entire existence with conflict. She's the reason why her parents are fighting, she's the reason for getting bullied. While it's not the most logical conclusion, Ame was an elementary schooler experiencing all of this, big problems that happen in that early of your childhood are obviously going to have severe impacts on your thought process and decision making when you grow older. 
Ahmed didn't have anyone dependable around her besides her group of friends that let her stay at their houses. Ahmed's parents never even gave their own child their attention, which is one of the minimum things you can do as a parent, so she uses the internet to escape all the pain, loneliness, and trauma she's experienced from reality. Ahmed is reliant on the internet to give her the attention and validation she never experienced as a child, especially being betrayed by her mother, a figure she thought she could trust, trying to force Ahmed to become a prostitute. Who wouldn't want to run away and restart their life online? Needy Streamer Overload showcases a side of anonymity the news and other sources of media often don't. On the internet, you aren't attached to a physical body with a backstory. It allows people to detach themselves from their circumstances and be able to communicate and connect with other people without worrying about appearances or their past. For all the unpopular kids and the social outcasts, the internet offers a second chance at finding a community you can confide in. Ama uses a second chance to sustain her own desires for validation by becoming becoming an internet streamer. Ironically, despite being bullied for being pretty and almost being forced into prostitution, at no point in time does Ahmed insult her own face. In fact, it's one of the only things she's proud of about herself, and from the late night day 15 dialogue, she is somewhat self-aware of all the emotional and mental problems she has. She knows she's clingy, she knows she has baggage, she knows she isn't doing anything productive with her life. Now, this might just be me speaking out of my ass and projecting, but I think that because Ahmed knows all of this about herself and considers herself scum of the earth, her appearance becomes the only thing she's proud of and she clings to it as the only good part about her. Out of context, it seems superficial and weird, prioritizing good looks over character, but her appearance is one of the few things Ahmed desperately attaches to in order to give herself value. Without it, in her eyes, there would be nothing good left about her. When we're assessing people today in society, whether it's for a potential romantic partner, job interview, or just getting to know someone better, Practically everyone agrees that personality outweighs appearance. It's funny, yet oddly rational that Ahmed flips this view the other way around. You know the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Well, Ahmed knows her book is a horrible story, but at least it has a nice looking cover. And if you're only proud of your face, of course you'd use it to gain internet clout and increase the validation you get by becoming a famous cosplay streamer. It's perfect for her. Ahmed doesn't need genuine interactions with her fans, so they don't get to see the ugly side of her. Ama is half delusional, half realist. She's aware of her problems, but is scared of confronting them, taking the alternative solutions instead, which she acknowledges can have unhealthy consequences. It's a weird but terrible spot to be in, to be smart enough to recognize your insecurities but not motivated enough to sort them out. While some of you may genuinely not be able to empathize with her struggles, she's had an extensive history of trauma and stress throughout her entire life. It takes a lot of effort to overcome that mentality and the emotions associated with these horrible memories. And it's made notably harder for Ame because she has very few people, if any, she can depend on. If you're ever struggling in life, knowing that at least someone is there for you can be a powerful motivator for self-improvement and recovery. However, Ame has no one in her corner. She only has Pichon, a faceless, cardboard personality, dry texter who dictates her schedule. And Pichon could have made her condition worse, letting her get addicted to medications and overworking her, crushing her mental and physical health. I've seen a couple of fan theories about Ame having borderline personality disorder, aka BPD, since she allegedly shows symptoms, something something distasteful, I can fix her joke here. I am obviously not a clinical psychiatrist, if you couldn't already tell by the YouTube channel. The best I've done is taken a college introduction to psychology course that I definitely did not cheat on the exams, so I can't and won't say anything on confirming a diagnosis, but the thing I remain adamant on is not trying to rationalize all her behavior with a disorder. While having a mental illness does certainly play a role in one's life, I believe it isn't the end-all be-all of explanations, especially in Amis' case. The music for this game is composed by Ayoban. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. They use innocent, simple bit and synth sounds that blend with their specialty, which is Japanese hardstyle EDM. If you've never played rhythm games or just have never heard of hardstyle, it's 
a bit rough on the ears at first, to put it lightly. I've listened to a lot of rhythm game music and EDM growing up, so I've grown accustomed to hardstyle, though I know it's not something a lot of people like on their first listen. The genre is very intense, kinda like the metal of EDM, but Ioban turns it down a couple of notches for NSO's soundtrack specifically. They trick you with bright, pixely sounds, but as your playthrough gets more chaotic, more hardstyle elements get thrown in, such as its infamous pounding kicks. I remember on my first runs going through this game, I would genuinely start panicking whenever I heard the relentless beating of the beat. I love what Ayoban did with the music. The massive contrast between a song that personifies being on the verge of a mental breakdown as Amis stress levels get a little too high, then as soon as the day ends, you hear the calming music of the milestone goal. It just adds so much to the entire hectic environment that's needy streamer overload. Ioban has also produced two music videos that aren't directly in the game, Internet Overdose and Internet Yamado. These songs feature Kotoko as the vocalist. Internet Overdose is mainly Eurobeat, while Internet Yamado has periodic genre switches throughout the song. Internet Overdose is K-Angel trying to get you to be infatuated with her, telling you to leave society and your troubles to be together with her on the internet. Internet Yamero is more from Ami's perspective, living with her mental struggles as she tries quitting the internet to improve herself. At the end of the song, she gives up on this idea and continues to fulfill her unhealthy addiction of approval. Ayoban goes full send on the hard style for Internet Yamero in some sections, and Kotoko enhances the panicked feeling with screaming. Not in like a heavy metal way, like genuine screaming. <laughs> Both the music videos feature a lot of flashing lights with chaotic graphics, much like how the internet itself overstimulates our visual and auditory senses, but as much as I'd like to analyze the videos themselves, I'd probably get striked for playing the music. Overall, the graphic design, video style, and music itself of the two music videos tie themselves really well to the game despite not being directly in it, so I suggest watching them after this video. They're also absolute bangers. There are 27 different endings you can get in this game. You heard that right, 27. The majority of them depend on your follower count, affection, and mental darkness by day 30, but there's some smaller endings that are here and there. For example, if you hug Ame seven times throughout your entire run, you get the Nymphomania ending where all she wants to do is hug all day. You can get cucked by having the affection meter at zero and Ame starts going out with a horse. Uh-oh. There's also the nerdy girl overload ending, where if you have above 500,000 followers and less than 80 affection by day 30, Ame leaves you and signs up with the streamer agency. She gets her heart broken by a super cute streamer guy, airs the breakup on Twitter to form the content, I respect the grindset, finally becoming a raging misandrist and murdering him. Now, I'm not gonna go through all 27 endings because that would take way too long, and some of them, like the Cucked or Nymphomania ending, have little to no significance unless you're a pretentious video essayist content creator who wants to overanalyze every single detail in the game. Wait a minute, that sounds a lot like me. I'll only be going through the two endings that really spoke to me, so let's start with the first one. Internet Overdose is the ending you get if you have Ame's stress bar above 80 at day 25 after she self-harms and raises her stress cap to 120. At the start of the 25th day, Ame will text you saying she feels sluggish and crabby from how hard she's been working. She does a vanity search and sees people hating on her for being the average female streamer that panders to a male incel audience. Ame posts on her private Twitter complaining about her haters but still plans on streaming. She posts on the K-Angel account that something shook her up a little but she'll keep working hard on hosting another stream that night. Ama texts you that she feels like she's experiencing more hate and it's starting to get to her. You wish her well on stream and she takes her pills to alleviate her stress. Ama streams at night and everything goes pretty smoothly until she notices negative comments in her chat. She then fixates on these comments on stream, calling them out. Ama starts feeling nauseous and she pukes on stream. She immediately goes offline and the next day starts. Ame does her vanity search again, and while there are some fans defending her, most of the discussion around her is based on the vomit stream from the previous day. She becomes nauseous, puking, and does another search for herself on 4chan. 
The reactions are mostly the same, but there's more people making fun of her because that's how 4chan works. Ahmed posts on her private Twitter that she's contemplating suicide, but decides not to follow through with that idea, believing that if she just does a normal stream that night, everything will return to normal since the internet moves on from things pretty quickly anyways. She posts on the K-Angel account that she's gonna stream as usual, and the replies are people making fun of her for vomiting. Ahmed streams, and it starts off normal, and just like previous days stream, she gets hate comments, but but this time, it's even worse than before since she's the main subject of the Taste the Rainbow discussion. Ahmed tries confronting the opposition, says that streamers are at the mercy of the audience, feels nauseous again, and barfs again. After the stream, Ahmed does more internet searches for K-Angel, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. People are making fun of her. On Fortune, though, it's a bit different. It turns out her real name and location were doxxed. The following day, your screen gets bombarded with windows of eyes, each one of them with a specific text that ridicules K-Angel and Amen. You are forced to manually close each one of these in order to have a navigable screen. At the end of all the windows, a prompt pops up on screen with the word DIE in all caps, and your options are either OK or OK. Clicking either of these causes Ahmed to overdose on pills, going into self-harming afterwards, and she starts up another stream called DIE where she completely loses it and starts wishing death upon the people watching. The chat is a mix of people actually praying she gets help and people ridiculing her. She ends the stream, and that's the end of that day. On day 28, your screen is filled with the words die, and Ame hallucinates people ringing the doorbell to the house, saying they found out where she lives. She begs for you to make it go away, and you tell her that no one's there. She tells you that you're lying, and yells at them to go away. You have the option to do any activity now, but they all lead to the same garbled prompt. Clicking any of the options makes Ame deranged, and she starts hyperfixating on making curry for dinner, asking if you could accompany her to the supermarket. She wishes she could be a housewife, and asks if you love her, and you say you do. Ame then posts some tweets on the K-Angel account. The first one is her calling out the people trying to trick her, saying she won't be fooled. The second one is her recognizing the flooring in the inpatient room at the hospital in an old photo. In the third post, Ame recollects a stray cat coming through her window. She chased it away due to having the thought of the cat getting more views than her on the internet, despite knowing that keeping it was the morally correct thing to do. The fourth post is Ame actually putting on the K-Angel personality, talking about the secret ingredient to making super tasty curry, which is love. The final post is her announcing that she's gonna stream that night. Out of context, that post would seem basic and innocent, but you know better. The line breaks make it read as choppy and short, heightening how out of touch Ame is with her current situation. All of the stress from being doxxed and being made fun of made Ame go completely insane to the point where she's willing to stream again. She streams with the title of Diagram of the Body, and the main subject is her talking about how she had a pet fish, but it died, showing that she had no right to be a parent. There is a nice bloodstain on the background wall for funsies. The screen then transitions to a poem. The self so tattered, torn to pieces, Ripping the air, the voice unceases, Imparted to flesh, the virgin soul, To a world as known as sky's black hole. Uncertain eyes, now what do they find? A crushing weight, born of flitting mind. Sacrifice, sacrifice, the subject, Of illusory connect unchecked. Do you love me? appears below the poem, Along with help me, in all caps, And here comes the final day. The world is being destroyed by brutes, a secret of you. I want you to understand the country is in shambles. Social welfare is a mess. There's no telling when someone will turn around and stab you in the back. When are these people gonna stop surveilling me? I have them all blocked. I'm not completely convinced. Really? If that's the case, I still have much to think about. We can change the internet together. I did my homework, so I know everything about this kind of stuff. You mean that transmission tower, right? Yep. I worked really hard, you know, to become a super awesome streamer and all. So cute. I think we could still make it. Let's do our best. You know much about video streaming? That's a bit impulsive. You know how there's always a helicopter flying above our house? I think it's there to send out mind control waves. I'm scared it'll come barreling down one day. Maybe blue? You think so too? You never take me seriously, you silly. <laughs> but I like it when you're a little mean to me. But I like it when you're a little mean to me! <laughs> Love, 
sex. Morpho butterfly. Yeah, morpho butterflies are the most beautiful species of butterfly in the world. I'm going to become a beautiful butterfly and fly freely in the sky above. <laughs> Morpho butterflies are bright blue butterflies associated with spiritual transformation. It's supposed to symbolize joy and good fortune, something like a wish granter. Here, Ama cements her wish as becoming the internet's angel in a twisted fashion. The conversation between her and Pichon is a garbled exchange, one that has the flow of a real conversation, but the responses don't make any sense in context. The screen transitions to a K-Angel stream with a bloodied K-Angel holding a portrait of Ame. The stream title is a cryptogram for Welcome to the Internet Angel's Stream. She gives a fun fact about how, in the Bible, demons have only killed 10 people while God killed millions, and then starts the usual stream topic of binge-watching anime. The ending message is another cryptogram, translating to now she is truly happy, and the game ends. When I first got this ending, everything happened way too fast for me to absorb, so the only thing I took away from it was stop using Twitter, which is honestly a pretty good lesson to learn. My description of this ending was super, super cut and dry because it's, in my opinion, the most fucked up ending out of all of them. The internet ridiculing is already horrible enough, but when Ahmed discovers she's been doxxed, I remember my shoulders feeling so heavy from the dread. The developers did a damn good job at heightening my anxiety with all those eyes popping up at the beginning of day 27. Ahmed wishing things would go back to normal made me pity her so much, and her dissociating from reality and trying to go through the motions of streaming again was extremely unsettling to watch. Enough of me cooming over the ending though, let's dissect this mess. An important factor to understand the ending is context. I mean, that's an important factor to understanding literally anything, but you get the idea. Remember, she needs at least 80 stress after uncapping her stress bar by day 25. There are clear bad omens of high stress not being good for Ame. The self-harm, the self-loathing texts, and that you should take this bar the most seriously out of all of them. This ending is what happens when you completely ignore her mental well-being. Ame, with her already deteriorated mental health, starts the day with a vanity search and sees people hating on her for being superficial. This doesn't cause anything too extreme for Ame. Ame, but it provides more anxiety for her descent into insanity. She overdoses on pills to relieve some stress, which, to put it lightly, isn't a very healthy way to cope with all the hate she's getting. When she goes on stream and sees more negative comments, she suddenly halts her entire internet persona to call her haters out. Ahmed barfs on stream, most likely a consequence of the medication overdose along with being extremely stressed, and she's ridiculed because of it. This entire setup is the biggest reason why I don't use TikTok or Twitter Twitter or Facebook or whatever cool quirky social media platform gets released in the future. Social media, for better or for worse, allows everyone to have a voice and a platform, but that also means as soon as you open the app, your brain immediately gets filled with other people's thoughts, a minority of which can be completely warped from your worldview. These apps are designed for user interaction so that they can collect data on your preferences to sell to advertisers, which is horrible, but literally every online service or platform does this. So there's nothing too special about Twitter in that regard. The most effective method to keep you using a social media site is by getting you emotionally charged. One way is through some sort of positive feeling like receiving likes and farming reddit gold I guess. The other, more sinister way is getting people to feel angry. Angry content is much more likely to be shared, which makes more people angry and that makes that more shared and it's a positive feedback loop. It's why Twitter is always such a hellhole and why everyone calls Twitter a hellhole but no one leaves. Ahmed doing non-stop vanity searches made her mental health so much worse and she was already extremely stressed to begin with. It's not surprising that she broke character on stream when she saw those hate comments and what she thought was her personal space. No one is built to handle this much information at once, hence the fitting name of the ending, Internet Overdose. Ame had too much of the internet and went completely insane because of it. Hate on the internet is pretty common, and many people say they have thick skin and don't let hate get to them and that you should man up and the haters are just people with a lot of time to waste, but no matter how fast your block button is or how good your moderators are, at the end of the day, a part of it still gets to you. When you become famous, there will always be a group of people who don't like you for whatever reason. You could be the purest man on earth, the second coming of Mr. Beast, and hate will still come your way. Ame, with her extremely stressed mental state, was not prepared for this. 
The human mind, for some messed up reason, is really good at focusing on the negatives after all. There are even people defending K-Angel and genuinely wishing for her to get better after that nauseating stream, but she never acknowledges them, instead fixating her attention on the fall of her reputation. Another thing I love about this ending is how it perfectly incorporates internet culture with the terrible side of anonymity. I discussed the good side of anonymity when talking about Ame using it as a second chance at connection, but as with any tool, it can also be used for less than pleasant intentions. Because anonymity allows anyone to say anything, people often use it to voice their opinion without bearing the responsibility that openly disliking something carries in real life, the potential of being physically confronted and outcasted from social circles and society. At first, the K-Angel haters start doing usual hater stuff, calling K-Angel fake and a slut, you know, usual women specific insults. After K-Angel's first time vomiting on stream, the spotlight becomes centered on her and the ridiculing snowballs. The haters start mocking her in a more obnoxious manner, pretending to be one of her super fans and slurping up her puke. Ame gets bombarded from all directions with animosity by people taking their morning coffee with a shot of extra cynical, thinking she faked the entire vomiting stream as a bit to farm views, even though it's clear to you that's far from what she wanted. After she tries to stream like normal, going terribly wrong into barfing again, the attention around Kangel escalates into doxing, with Ame's real name and location becoming known to the public. Getting doxed as someone famous is one of the most appalling things that can happen in your career. If you're not under the spotlight and you get doxxed, it might be scary at first, but it's not that big of a deal because no one really cares who you are. But when you have hundreds of thousands of fans to your name, having the boundary between your real life and your online life being forcefully stripped is terrifying. As much as content creators love their job or hobby and the notoriety that comes with it, I'm sure I speak for every creator when I say that having it seep into our daily lives is something none of us want. Unless you're the sociopath that is Jake Paul and want children to stroke your ego by singing against every day bro right outside your house. We have a right to privacy as much as anyone else, and just because you idolize us in one aspect of our lives doesn't mean you get to infiltrate the other aspects. The absolute worst part is that all her haters and the people who doxed Ame get to enjoy their anonymity, avoiding the repercussions of destroying someone's privacy and reputation, while Ame has to suffer being publicly humiliated and having a major coping mechanism of hers destroyed. She gets to sit there with her anxiety and stress peeking through the roof while the people who should be held responsible get to point and laugh at her misery. Instead of just being D-tier incel insults, calling her a whore and whatnot, Ame's terrible childhood of skipping school and being a shut-in gets put on the loudspeaker for everyone to make fun of her. And remember how she got bullied in elementary school for being too pretty? Yeah, well how about the perfect shitstorm to resurface that trauma, huh? The situation is even worse than her childhood trauma considering how they're rubbing salt in the wound of a previous scar. It isn't surprising she became completely deranged from this. Ame is too attached to the internet. She desperately relies on it to fulfill her desire for approval and attention. Ame tried constantly streaming every day even when she knew it was a bad idea. Instead of analyzing the situation and taking a break from streaming like a reasonable person, she kept trying to maintain her relevance and persona, something that when you think about it isn't really that important in the grand scheme of things versus, oh, I don't know, your suicidal ideation and constant self-loathing? The last three lines of the poem at the end of day 28 especially affirm this message. The crushing weight is her need for validation. The flooding mind refers to Ama's unstable mental state. Ama sacrifices herself, the subject, for an illusory connect unchecked, which refers to her streaming career and the K-Angel persona. The poem explains why the day 29 stream is a bloodied K-Angel holding a picture of Ama who is metaphorically presumed dead. Because of the bloodstains, K-Angel is implied to have caused the death of Ame, who gave up her mental and physical well-being for the continuation of her virtual counterpart. As much as we love to laugh at someone's demise, it's important to remember that at the end of the day, the person we're laughing at is another human being. It's a really cheesy message, I know, but the internet loves picking on people for being out of trend, and if you think I'm 41 and balding for trying to bring empathy to the table, go back to any 2017 Leafy is Here video and see how well that aged. Literally. I'm not saying you're not allowed to dehumanize war criminals, but in NSO's case, Ame was simply using the internet to improve her circumstances in life and connect with the community she wanted to build. You could argue that she's faking her K-Angel persona to be liked and having simps donate to her and 
That's true, but she has moments where she talks to you about her next dream idea showing genuine interest and passion in that idea. She didn't entirely deserve all that happened to her. This ending, Amin's thirst for approval overwhelmed her to the point where she sacrificed her mental and physical health for internet gratification that was, in the end, never received. While the internet was absolutely cruel, mocking and berating her, Amin could have prevented her own descent into insanity by watching the warning signs. This route for Amin was extremely haunting, but I just want to remind everyone that even though the game reflects some aspects of life very realistically, it isn't a one-to-one -one copy of reality. The ending was made with the intention of being grotesque as an extra shock factor, and the sequence of events progresses in a similar real-life fashion, but real life has many subtle, random differences that usually balances the situation out. Now, that's the worst ending analyzed. Next up on the list is the true ending. This ending... Comment te dire adieu? Is in the bane of all languages. French. <laughs> French! It translates to how to say goodbye to you, or at least that's what Google Translate tells me. This ending is only achievable if you've gotten all the other endings, and as a sanest Amisimp out there, of course I got all of them. I have all the achievements on this game, including the one where you grind a 1 out of 100 chance at the start of every day. When you start out the game, there are only 3 save slots you can use. However, after unlocking this ending, a fourth save slot called Data Zero shows up. Clicking on it, the game warns you that you will not be able to return. Clicking OK, the game immediately starts with Ame telling you to watch her. Days whiz by of all the streams and activities you've previously done. The going outs, the chat and chill streams, the unhinged Twitter posts, all of these flash as a blur. The follower count keeps growing, while the stress, affection, and mental darkness bars all flicker up and down. As the days pass by, Ama tells you that she wanted to try doing it herself for once. She's growing more and more into the mindset of the proper streamer, thinking that her follower size is just the right amount. At first, she was worried, but it's working out. Ama knew she had a lot of options to go with, but she chose this one because it felt more correct. She acknowledges there's a side to her that she doesn't know yet, and that she wants to get to know that side better. Am is proud of herself for everything working out from her own efforts, and she admits she didn't need you after all. She looks to a better future, deciding that she's going to pursue it with her own hands. Amma then leaves the webcam screen, forever. You're left staring at an empty gamer chair. There's a document on the desktop called secret.txt, and if you were on any other save file, attempting to access it would be blocked by the webcam. However, in this ending, you're able to click and open it. The file reads the following. Notes on the current Pichon. Profile. My favorite person in the world and also my producer tells me what to do so we can turn K-Angel into the strongest internet angel. Also, support me emotionally and mentally. I love my Pichon. Thoughts. The current Pichon isn't bad, but I, I kind of can't deal with people only being nice to me. So I made things work by myself, but it's not ideal. I'll just make a better peach on next time. One that's so dreamy that I'll never wake. I think I'll start off with the goal of making marriage material next. I can't wait to live a new life happily married. The text is followed by a childish crayon drawing of Ame and Kane Joel holding hands. After reading the document and realizing everything that happened, I couldn't stop myself from smiling. It's the perfect ending for Ame. It's quite simple. You, Pichan, were never real in the first place. Pichan was an imaginary friend made up by Ame as a kid to help her cope with her loneliness and anxiety. The reason why you couldn't access this text file in other saves is because Ame, even as an adult, wasn't ready to let this imaginary friend go. Instead of relying on Pichon for support and guidance as she did in every other save file and ending, Ame takes her future into her own hands and does everything by herself. She even accomplished her goal of a million followers in 30 days by herself. She realized that she didn't need the help of Pichon after all, is proud of herself that she created something without the help of Pichon, and wants to explore this side of her that she never experienced. Ame literally tested every route with you because you had to get every ending in this game in in order to unlock this one. She's seen what would happen if she got that stress bar too high, or had too many promiscuous dreams. Ahmed decided that everything you chose for her was never truly what she wanted, and she leaves you to find a better version of herself. Yes, the other endings were all in the head. I tricked you, didn't I? This video was actually a pyrocynical upload all along, but with a thousand percent more anime and a fourth of the effort.
This ending was bittersweet for me. On one hand, I would never be part of Ami's journey again, a character that I wanted to see succeed and had grown attached to because of how relatable she was. But on the other hand, she ultimately didn't need any of my help in the end, and it's this reasoning that I think this ending is perfect for Ame. She always had it in her to help herself. It's not like some cheesy generic anime dating sim where the girl accomplishes everything but is still extremely attached to you because woo woo anime girl. Ame says that you've done enough for her, and in order for her to get better, she needs to do things herself. And because her history is packed with trauma and her mental health is never quite right, the fact that she took a major step and helping herself in a healthy way is amazing. It's a bit cringe to be this attached to a fictional character, I know, but I was unironically proud that Ama did things her way. This route is not as complex as the other endings, especially the one I previously analyzed, but its focus on Ame growing is the reason why I love it so much. Most of the other endings have her in some sort of mental breakdown, and there's a couple where she commits suicide in different fashions. The fact that the majority of the other routes are tragic while well, this one isn't shows that there's hope for people like Ame, that they can still steer the course of their lives and that they aren't destined for failure. I've been stopping myself from gushing about why I love this game in the previous segments because it would just diverge into tangents and the entire video structure would fall apart, but this is the part where I get to go sans megalovania all out mode. Needy Streamer Overload perfectly encapsulates what it's like as a content creator to gamify content creation and growth. The human brain is terrible at conceptualizing numbers past counting your fingers and toes, so when you get to the hundreds of thousands of followers, the brain rot consumes your mind, and you only see your audience as a giant blob of similar interests rather than a group of individuals. By seeing everything as numbers, creators can lose sight of why they started content creation in the first place, and while it's healthy to pay attention to your analytics and understand the shape of your channel, at the end of the day, spamming F5 on the channel dashboard doesn't make your content any better. Simplifying everything into numbers and pandering to big channel growth can make creators spew out content that isn't their best effort, which is fine once in a while, but if you've been keeping this up for a fat minute, you risk losing your creativity and getting to heavy burnout. Speaking of gamification, Ama's stream ideas also get progressively more extreme for the sake of seeing that follower count get bigger. Like at first it was just telling viewers she loves them or faking her clothes accidentally unbuttoning, but then it goes into seductively eating ice cream or riding a yoga ball in very big elaborative quotes. It's a gross feeling, sacrificing your pride and authenticity for internet clout, because every time you do one of these streams, that follower count skyrockets, so your mind starts seeing these streams as trade-offs between authenticity and viewership rather than actual ideas with showmanship and passion behind them. You dissociate from the persona you created, which to me is scary because your internet persona as a content creator at the end of the day is supposed to derive from your true personality. Managing Ame puts you in that state of weighing the pros and cons of sacrificing your mental and physical well-being for content creation. It's a universal unhealthy obsession that's applicable with any hobby, but this lesson of having a healthy balance is much more personal for this current generation because of the way our mental health is being impacted by the internet. Especially with the 4 year olds today being raised on YouTube kids and the pre-teens being raised on TikTok, it's horrifying to think that impressionable young children can be fed dangerous and outright repulsive content. I'm not here to sound like an old ass man and yell at kids to play book instead of read video game or be white mom number 57 and think of the children since it's fundamentally a parenting issue, but it's inarguable that these apps will have detrimental effects on the minds of kids today once they grow up. I grew up with the internet, and even though my attention span is slightly longer than most people my age because I specifically try to avoid the main content monster algorithms that are literally omnipresent, 
my attention span is still probably shorter than a goldfish, and we're not even talking about the gorillion mental health problems that can be made worse by the internet. You already saw how Ami's obsession with validation caused a massive down spiral of destroying herself for online clout. The internet can be very dangerous for people with declining mental health because of how desperate people are to feel like they're worth something. Being online has the potential to expose you to so many predatory ideas and schemes that vulnerable people can become trapped in. Fans of pretentious, grandiose content creators want to live the life the celebrities have and are willing to throw money at whatever sham of a product that creator sells. Extremely insecure men who aspire for success may adopt the idea that women are lesser than them simply because they want a scapegoat for why their life sucks. When you're alone and in that type of headspace, it's easy to become self-destructive and attach yourself to something or someone that you feel gives you worth even though that thing or person might be taking advantage of you. I've said earlier how the internet can offer individuals to connect with communities that share the same type of thinking, relieving feelings of loneliness and anxiety, but looking at the darker side of that path, people can become stuck in terrible habits because it's all they surround themselves with online. They're too scared to leave or don't know any better because the alternative is being alone. The internet itself is one massive distraction from reality, which, you know, take that as you will, I'm not here to judge you for being terminally online because I'm definitely worse than you, but because it's a massive distraction, we spend less time thinking about and processing our problems and instead just try getting away from them for as long as we're online. Needy streamer overload gets internet culture right down to the finest details. The incels on 4chan, the way people in K Angel streams chatted, the way her haters in the internet overdose ending were mocking her, all of these small elements I could easily see happening in today's online world. It's not like a group of old washed up writers trying to be hip with the kids and using grumpy cat images with impact bold top text and bottom text. The fact that the game embodies internet culture from today makes the struggles and thoughts of Ame more relatable to the player rather than XD la epic doge face from 2010. If you've played Japanese RPG horror games like Eve, Mad Father, Aoni, Miso, or Witch's House, you know that these games are very raw. And Needy Streamer Overload follows in similar steps, not sugarcoating anything. And honestly, maybe the actual consequences of the game are a tad exaggerated, but that's fine, because without it being that way, I personally wouldn't have taken the messages the game had to offer seriously. The fact that Ami's circumstances in almost every other ending turn out absolutely horribly for her really emphasizes how the internet doesn't magically solve everyone's struggles, especially when you combine it with her heavy amounts of childhood trauma. Which sounds like a no-brainer, yet our generation is absorbed in the internet and surrounding culture. Of course we'd be desensitized to all these problems. It took a game where I get to manage a cosplay streamer anime girl's extremely unhealthy daily routine for everything to sink in and realize that the internet might not be all sparkles and sunshine. What really made me want to make this entire video essay wasn't actually the mental health stuff. I mean, that was a big part of it, sure, but this is why NSO is one of my favorite games. Needy Streamer Overload wouldn't be the game it is without Ame. If you couldn't tell by the way I talked about her, I love Ame. No, not in like a simp, dedicated K-Angel shrine type fashion. I mean, I do have posters and a keychain and a body pillow of her, but genuinely, I think she's an awesome character. I am God's strongest Ame fan. Ame radiates so much Zoomer internet culture energy. Throughout my runs, there's been so many times where she just randomly texts you so stupid it's charming messages, and that's why I love this game. It has the mannerisms of someone who's terminally online down to a T, clearly showing the amount of effort and research that went into this game to emulate how people on the internet today act. There's also tons of smaller interactions I didn't go over, like how if you get over a million followers and try getting Ami to overdose on medications, she stops that idea. Or how anything related to the internet increases her stress while doing activities that aren't decrease it. It really shows how a person's mindset changes over time and how it impacts their decision making in the smallest ways. 
More than all of these things, Ami's character is someone I think we can all relate to. I believe that when confronted with a situation that doesn't have an obvious logical solution, people feel first and then justify those feelings using logic and reasoning. So when Ami started rationalizing her depression and darker thoughts with genuine reasons, it made me reflect on when I used to have those thoughts similar to hers. There's a certain stigma that people afflicted with mental trauma are acting emotionally, and that if they were to just be rational and suppress their emotions, they could overcome their problems. But what's terrifying is that people with suicidal ideation can give intelligent, sound arguments for why they should make their thoughts a reality. Ami's years of childhood trauma don't manifest as her crying and eating ice cream in the bathtub all day at age 18. It's in the much more subtle details, how she views herself, how she sees society, and what her aspirations are. Good media portray depression as this gaping, empty feeling inside of you, but needy streamer overload showed another side to mental trauma that a lot of shows and video games overlook look, which is how victims afflicted with mental illness can still think in a reasonable manner. Ame is aware of her self-destructive behavior, doesn't take any steps to fix it until the true ending, and hates herself for it, which from the outside doesn't make any sense. If you know something's wrong, why can't you just get up and fix it, you idiot? But I think this is a struggle most of us can relate to. You know a problem exists, but you don't fix it, and then you start thinking you're stupid for not being able to fix it, and now your whole life is a mess, and your degree is worthless, and you make YouTube videos for a living, and this is why dad never loved you. Being aware of your own insecurities isn't enough to fix them. I think a lot of people try to logic their entire way through life, and yeah, that might work if you're a robot or a psychopath, but most people aren't. You also have to be emotionally willing to confront your inner demons, which Ame was missing in every ending except the true one, and I think this message resonates with a lot of today's youth. Ame is a fully fleshed out character whose personality isn't summed up with a quirky anime girl clumsy or bubbly trait. Even disregarding her extreme desire for approval on the internet, her mental health crises are something almost anyone growing up today can empathize with. Obviously, you should not be idolizing Ame's extreme behaviors, and on top of that, no one should be romanticizing mental illness and depression, and if you're doing that, reflect on yourself for a bit. Nyalra, the game's writer, has an account on Note.com where they write about their various thoughts on any subject that crosses their mind, but it usually tends to be otaku stuff. When making NSO, it's clear that Nyalra took inspiration from their own life to use as a backstory for Ame. For example, in their Angel Fall Down post, they mentioned being a gloomy female otaku who dropped out of school, which also describes Ame pretty well. In their fake internet angel entry, they write in Japanese that every time the name K-Angel gets bigger, they wonder what Ame means. Unlike internet angels who bring smiles to otakus around the world, the Ames are ugly lumps of flesh that no one wants. Nyalra acknowledges that in order for K-Angel to exist, she has to maintain some form of separation from Ame. K-Angel is a pure idol who brings joy to all her fans on the internet while Ame has mental breakdowns, self-harms, and overdoses on drugs. And despite all of Ame's shortcomings, I honestly like her more than her cosplaying counterpart because she genuinely seems like someone I'd enjoy hanging out with. Nyalro's aware that Ame's personality doesn't sit right with a lot of people. However, her brutally honest opinions and chaotic energy are what make her character so... awesome. In my eyes, Ame's personal growth and struggle in NSO are more beautiful than the K-Angel persona will ever be. Some people tend to characterize Ame purely by her self-destructive, delusional, and impulsive qualities, and think that the game's message ends there. And while her extreme actions are an integral component to the game raising awareness about mental health, I personally don't think that it paints the full picture. Ame's story to me is one where she was dealt a terrible hand in life, but even though the universe gave her the middle finger and her circumstances at a young age made her predisposed towards a hopeless future, she slowly but surely came to terms with her trauma by using the internet and streaming as an outlet. Needy Streamer Overload was Ame's journey realizing all the terrible consequences of her habits and unresolved issues, and in the end, she took a step in the right path to help herself by herself. Overall, Needy Streamer Overload is a 10 out of 10 game that hits a little too close to home for someone like me. The amount of detail handling topics like content creation, the internet, and mental health with extremely nuanced takes is what makes it my favorite game of all time. Also, it came with a very cute anime girl.
Oh, hey, you're still here. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and tell me what you think in the comments, especially if you've never heard of me before. If you're a regular Arknights viewer, uh, surprise I guess. Huge thanks to my friend and editor, Pep. He did that very sexy PV all by himself and a bunch of other design assets like the segment cards. Big thanks to Winx for voicing Amis' texts, amazing work and performance, letting Amis' character really shine. Having Winx on is so much better than the alternative, which would be me with my super hot and sexy monotone voice just narrating Amis' lines. The final shoutout goes to Zafang, who made the thumbnail of the video. I am terrible at graphic design, so I appreciate his work 100% with 1000%. I would clap for all of them right now, but that would ruin the audio I'm recording, so you guys should do that for me instead. Big round of applause for all of them for making this video possible. Anyways, that's about it from me. See ya.